Ladies and gentlemen, grab your pen and paper and write down three things you're grateful for. This is OD on Life. Come get high with us. Hey everybody, this is Dan O'Donnell here. Welcome to OD on Life, episode number five. Today I have with me Anton Crayley. He's an online entrepreneur and he's here in Chiang Mai right now doing a big event in a few days. So welcome and thank you for coming on, Anton. Yeah, Dan, thanks for having me. Looking forward to talking a little bit and getting to know your audience. Right on. Uh, The goal of each episode, as some of you already know, is that we want you to walk away with at least one nugget that you can actually apply to improve your life. So um, we would like to be entertaining, but the real goal is that we help you make a better life for yourself. So the cool thing I want to mention, uh, Anton agreed to do this podcast yesterday. And it was uh, just kind of on a whim. And he said, yeah, how about tomorrow? And I mentioned to him that a lot of the people I know that get the most done, that's kind of how they operate. It shouldn't, if, you're, if you feel like you're swimming upstream, maybe, uh, maybe pursue other opportunities in some cases. What do you think about that? Yeah, right. You said the same thing to me when you recommended the local coffee shop to host a party at here. For the, I'm doing an event out in Chiang Mai, and uh, Dan had messaged me on Facebook and said one of the local coffee shop owners was willing to do a party for people that are coming out to my event. And I just said, yeah, that sounds great. I messaged the guy with a few details. He said, okay. And I think 20 minutes later, we had a confirmed time for a party at the place. So yep. kind of that whole, like, if there's a good idea, just take action on it. I know Dan, you know, not that well yet. I'm looking forward to getting, getting to know him a little more in this podcast, but I've heard great things about him. And, you know, so yesterday he asked me to be on the podcast. And of course, it wasn't a question of, oh, let me think about it or what do you want to talk about? It was, yeah, sure. I'd love to just have a conversation. Right. And, you know, I've, I've just found that to be true with there's three people I'm thinking of in particular, you and two other people in town here, including Leon, the owner of Coffee Monster. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's just kind of how you operate. I think part of it is you have enough going on that there's no time to just think and waste time. And you're either going to do it or not. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's a very quick no. But it's usually quick one way or the other. Yeah, that's an important thing too. Yeah, there's definitely lots of no's. So it's not the answer isn't to say yes to everything, but it's to recognize if something's a good idea or an opportunity and just take action on it right away. I mean, there's so many other examples too. I know a lot of people that are in the same space as us that are online entrepreneurs. And I see all these posts on Facebook. Let's say, for example, someone started a new business and they want feedback. Maybe it's on their logo or the color of their website or a headline for some text that they're going to put on their website. And they ask a million questions and months go by with nothing happening. And with me, someone that's been doing this for you know eight years now I don't even ask for advice or test anything at first if I have an idea I'll basically lock myself in my office for 10 hours and make it happen and make it a reality so yeah there's really if you want to be successful I think not just in life but in business there's not really time to like waste and second guess yourself or ask everyone else's opinion because the people's opinion that matters it's really your own if you believe in something just do it yeah and that feedback that you will get when if it's a website when Mm -hmm. it goes live and you get feedback from actual customers that's a hundred times more valuable. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, what your friends and family are going to say isn't as important as the people that are potentially going to pay yeah. for your product or service. Right. I actually I had a meeting earlier today with a guy, Derek, who you, who you know and is yes. enrolled in your course. Yes. Um, and we were talking about a different type of online marketing. And he just he puts out about five or more new campaigns every day. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people in that same niche, they might do a new campaign. You know, a typical person might do one a week. And then they get discouraged if three don't work, mm-hmm. you know, and he, I think if I remember right, he does about five a day and he says maybe one in 10 or one in 15 work. Mm-hmm. So it's just get out there, take action, see what works, learn, you know, try to adjust and get smarter as you go. But yeah, I believe in that too. When you just get started, you will learn so much more quickly. Yeah, it's funny because Derek actually, he's one of the people, like you said, he's in the, a course that I have that helps people with e-commerce. But that guy, for example, you're talking about how he's now hustling with this business. Same thing. When he started with my course, in three weeks, he had an e-commerce store set up and running and making money. And it's so funny because it's just that mindset, right? Because yeah. there's so many other people that join my course that'll ask me questions for months on end and it'll take them seriously, sometimes half a year to yeah. get to the level that he had got himself to in three weeks. Right. And it's not because he's, it's, he's smarter. It's not because he second-guessed everything. It's because he just said, okay, I know this works because you told me it does, and he did it. So yeah. it's that basically that winning mindset is just doing things and not waiting for something to magically happen. And he reminded me when he did that, I had never heard of somebody in your course doing it that quickly. Mm-hmm. The typical, it seemed like like the respectable number, if you were actually trying, seemed to be about two months. Is yeah, that, is that that, that's right? exactly what yeah. I would say. Yeah, around two and or three months. I actually went through the course mm-hmm. and made my first sale in almost exactly two months. Yep. I was like, cool, you know, I, that's respectable. And then we all saw him do it in three weeks. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like the four-minute mile. 
because then Toto... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great example of this. Yeah, he he set a one-month goal to net $1,000. Yes. And it's funny because he says he didn't hit it, but he's counting the cost of the course. I know. The, <laughs> I saw right? that, yeah. So I think if he if he even spread the cost of the course over, say, the first year, oh, I yeah. think he would have hit it. 100%, yeah. Yeah. So th- this guy, uh, he runs a Facebook page. If you guys want to look him up, it's called Dropship Kickstart. And um, German guy, he set up an e-commerce store in Germany, and literally, like, it's so amazing because he went from not knowing anything about e-commerce, like not knowing anything about dropshipping, to going through a training course, learning a t- learning an entirely new business model. That alone takes time. He taught himself the business model by following videos, by asking questions in the forum, put up a website, got approved with suppliers, set up all his like payment processing, and started making money like two weeks after yeah. learning a new business. Like that's so amazing. So follow his progress because that's someone like normally if someone let's say like in that example, they want to sign up for the course and kind of blog about it. Maybe they'll ask me questions like, hey, should I do this? What do you think? I didn't hear from him until I saw people on my Facebook talking about this guy that's really just like going for and going all out. And like, I love stuff like that. Like, don't ask questions. Just do it. Just just do it. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know for a fact, but did he know about Derek's track record of the three week thing I, I honestly don't even know I met Toto at I'm at Dan's oh, apartment right yeah. now I met Toto at Dan's apartment yesterday for the first time so I think it's like 35 or 36 days after he started and he's reached out to me only one time because he was excited about this event we have coming up but yeah, yeah like, like he's like you don't have to ask people a million questions you don't have to go right. to the people who are supposed to be the authority you just have to really just, just work at it and you know what you've done I, I know for a fact that he did ask a million questions mm-hmm. but because you've created this community uh-huh. He didn't ask them to you. Yep. Because now they're, if you go to Pun Space or Coffee Monster, you know, these are two different co working spots here in town. There are other people there who have done it. And so you probably, I mean, I don't know if you get more questions or less questions than when it was new, but you've got these other people out there who can answer those right. questions. Right. Yeah, that, that's true. So between the different communities that are out here in Southeast Asia right now, and in most, more specifically, um, an online forum that I run, that's really, it's an e-commerce forum. Yeah. So people can sign up there. They basically ask questions and they can search the database of old questions. So there is a lot of resources out there for people that want it. But yeah, yeah but just, just to say like someone like him that, you know, I never met that started doing really well and now his new goals are I, I saw his new goal list the other day and it's um i think he's trying to get up to ten thousand a month in profit and hire his mom and it's just like whoa wow. yeah yeah yeah. I didn't know uh, yeah i saw that he posted it i think yesterday so cool. like really just amazing stuff so i'm excited to track his progress and um just n- more examples of people like this that have that just just do it mindset don't don't ask too much don't think too much with this event coming up i'm meeting more and more people now that are coming out to chiang mai which is where i'm doing it and these are people that have never posted in my forum as far as i know i don't recognize their name I don't, I don't know them yet, so I, I'm trying to meet them all. And I ask everyone, like the first question after they say, "Hey, Anton, I'm here for your retreat." I say, "Awesome, man! Like, how's your store doing? You know, what, what are you up to?" And some people are doing really well. And it's what's cool is I have no, you know, I just don't know because I can't keep track of everyone. I don't ask questions, so I love seeing stuff like that. So yeah. it's really just people that just take action. I think are the ones that that see the success. Just yeah. and just coming back to like, say, when when do you say no? For example, there's plenty of people here if they asked me to do their podcast. You know, I wouldn't say yes to because I know there's a lot of um, not just smaller audiences, but there's also a lot of podcasts where people repeat each other. You know, so yeah. for example, yeah, like let's say just talking about e-commerce, for example, if you wanted to get technical with it, I've done that podcast five times already with right. different people, and it gets old. So I really like th- what you're doing with this and kind of taking a different approach and getting into the mentality rather yeah. than the the techniques. That was part of my pitch to you. Yep. <laughs> because you know this is the whole like uh, Stephen Covey thing, right? Understand the other person, right, before mm-hmm. you try to make something happen. And so I'm thinking, if I was Anton, I might be tired of doing the same podcast over and over again. And and if you want to know, I mean, I actually didn't expect to talk this much about your business right in the front. Yeah. If you want, if we've sparked your curiosity, just search, I don't know, Anton method or uh, what, what's the best URL? Yeah. Just go to dropshiplifestyle.com or look it up on Facebook and you'll find the page. Yeah. And you'll see videos that Anton's got up there. You'll, you can listen to other podcasts that he's done with other people. If you want more details specifically on Mm dropshipping and how to, you know, free up your lifestyle and work online basically. Right, right, right. So uh, I've actually, just to give you the, the credibility you deserve, I know several people here personally, friends of mine, that your course, your system that you've created has really changed their life. 
And I mean, these are people that used to either work a corporate job or they were maybe scraping by as some kind of a photographer or travel blogger or something. And now they're making a a respectable income that they can really live off of. And it's, I've seen it change people's lives and it's really cool. So congratulations to you. Yeah. Thanks for that. And I say congratulations to all of them. That's what I love about Chiang Mai, this, this community here. For anyone listening to this that might have the opportunity to be location independent or maybe get a few weeks away from work, I would so recommend coming to this place because the community here, it's not just people that have the same type of business as me at all you know people are doing all different types of things running businesses all over the world and really living whatever kind of life they want and people think thailand and i know before i came here i kind of pictured like this poorer place where yeah. i i really thought it would be good for like a couple week trip you know go see it but it's more than livable i don't really miss anything from back home in a place like this um you know even like the the things that you wouldn't think you can get here there's this huge like mall that just opened here so yeah. if you want that kind of life and you can go to any shop you recognize from home you can go to huge movie theaters they even have a 4d yeah, movie theater right. i don't even have that back in new york yeah. so some stuff's <laughs> even like better like that and then for example, where Dan lives, which is five minutes outside of the main city, you're overlooking like gorgeous mountains surrounded by greenery. We saw a guy walking a horse down the street yeah. the other day. So you could really have the best of both worlds. So I highly recommend coming yeah, out here. Absolutely. I actually put it on my to-do list to track down where are these horses coming from because yep. <laughs> I want to go riding. Yeah. And I know you've got family coming. We should go riding. Man. I would love it. I would love it. Yeah. I, I can't remember the last time I've been on a horse. It's been probably 10 years. Yeah. It's so fun. I think I was at camp when I was about 12 years old. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, and Anton's right. You know, we... We end up talking a lot about online business on this podcast, or we at least mention it. But um, there are tons of people retired here. Mm -hmm. There are people that are on disability. And I know a guy in this building who I don't know exactly what happened, got hurt, can't really work. His disability goes so much further here, it's insane. I mean, the lifestyle is wonderful, you know? I think that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, When uh, Last night, no, two nights ago, I was out to dinner with uh, with Johnny, one of our mutual friends. And there was a couple sitting next to us, um, an older couple, a retired couple from the States. I think they were from North Carolina. And Johnny and I were just having a conversation about, you know, living out here and online business. And the lady said to him... I know who you are. So it was it was just really funny how we had a huge conversation with these two people and they're retired now from North Carolina and they spend five months of every every year cool. here in Chiang Mai. Yeah. And it's just a way to make your money go so much further. Right. So it's not just for, you know, online entrepreneurs and you're not gonna run out of stuff to do. There's plenty there's nature everywhere, there's yeah. great weekend trips. So Or literally for less than a hundred dollars round trip you can fly to Malaysia or mm-hmm. Hong Kong. I'm all over the region. Everywhere, there's yeah. Vietnam, Cambodia, Bali, there's yeah. so many places you can go. There's an international airport ten minutes from where we're sitting right now. Yep. Yeah. They, they actually fly almost directly over this building. Uh-oh. You know, and, I, and every time I see one, I wonder, you know, where's that one going? Yeah. Is that going to Macau or Hong Kong or somewhere else cool I haven't seen? Yeah, this is like the center of a really great, I would say, like hub of uh, Southeast Asia. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let me try to get into some things that I know that you probably haven't gone over in other um, podcasts. One thing that came up yesterday, it, you were kind of telling a funny story about some guys that were at the college you went to doing mm-hmm. some counterfeiting yeah. activities, right? <laughs> and uh, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about shortcuts. Mm-hmm. And uh, these guys that, where was it? Albany? Yeah, yes. SUNY Albany. And they were making fake 20s, right? They were making fake 20s and you, selling you them. You yeah. give them one real 20, they you get you five, five back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... That was one of those like shortcut things that probably I'm guessing they had fun in the short term. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. But uh, it, um, it landed them in prison, correct? Yeah, yeah. And I see in a different way people try to take shortcuts in business, and they're always trying to find you know the little hack and the little thing they can do that's a little more clever than the other guy. And I'm not saying it's bad to try to be clever, but there are things like Anton's course and lots of other examples that there's this proven track that if you just go down it and you listen to the people who have done it before, you will end up having results. So what what are your thoughts on that? Shortcuts. Yeah, there's so many, like if you go online, let's say you're totally new to online business and you Google like make money online or something like that. There's a good chance you're going to find a lot of these sites that try to show you the easy way. And there are easy ways to kind of get lucky fast and they're not legitimate ways. So this is the problem. So let's say you, you find one of these websites and you learn some of these what I call shady techniques. They're not going to get you in jail, but what they will get you is maybe, yeah, exactly. So maybe you'll get like a quick payday and not even that great. Maybe you'll make like a few thousand bucks and then you'll have all of your accounts basically suspended for life. So again, you're not looking at legal trouble, but you're looking at a business that lasts for a month or two and then you can never use PayPal again. You can never use Google AdWords again. You can never use all of these tools that a real business owner needs. So uh, it's funny because even people that I work with now are people that are trying to find workarounds to get their accounts back because they try these, these, shortcuts right so 
a lot of people think like this is I'll, I'll tell you what I used to think because I know a lot of people that don't have an online business now are probably in the same situation. So back when I got out of Albany in, uh, in 2006, I graduated college. I thought I was going to start an offline business. The reason is I thought an online business was like super expensive to start. And, you know, when you don't know anything about like you go to a website, right? And it looks gorgeous. Like if I, if myself back then, saw one of my websites now and someone asked me, what do you think this website costs to build? I would have been like, I don't know, $20,000, $30,000. Yeah. I'd have no idea. That's so and, funny. Right. Yeah, but it's true. And, and like, I'm yeah. sure you might have thought the same oh, yeah. thing, but now with like these tools out there, let's say for example, my e-commerce stores are built on Shopify, yep. which is basically like a plug and play e-commerce store builder. It costs $29 a month. So a yeah. store that to me looked like it cost 20 or 30 grand cost someone $30 yeah. to build. Right. And same thing with like these podcasts, uh, websites, or just blogs. They look like, wow, someone must put yeah. a lot of time into that. But they're, they're what's called these themes. So right. they come pre-installed and you could buy them for $9, $10. And somebody did probably put 30 grand into it, but it was Squarespace.com exactly. or Shopify, yep. not you. Right. And then they just go, hey, give us the 25 bucks a month. Yep. You know? And you get to use this beautiful website yeah. and no one, no one knows any better. So mm-hmm. the customers coming to it, the visitors coming to it, they don't know. So there's lots of opportunity to build, to build a real business. And these are the businesses that you might be looking at now that you might be using maybe blogs you're reading e-commerce stores you're buying from and you think that like someone put you know tons of money and time into it meanwhile you could be competing with them if you just put in the kind of the effort but not a lot of money to build a real business and when i say a real business i just mean something sustainable so not about how much money you're making from it but something that's not going to get your accounts banned something that's not going to get you flagged on google you know something that that's lasting like an actual business you could be proud to basically like the test is like if you could be proud to tell your friends and family you own it then it's a real business like, right yeah that's an interesting metric or whatever right. i've heard somebody talks about the grandma test mm-hmm. would you tell would you admit to your grandma that you do this right 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 <laughs> you know, yeah so, yeah i think that's pretty valid um so another thing that we've actually talked about on a couple of these episodes and it, it it's always interesting to me to hear people's take is um asking for help and advice mm-hmm. the right way to do it the wrong way to do it uh, you're probably a guy that gets asked a lot yep so i'm curious to hear your take on that yeah so it depends like I ask for advice from friends mostly. I'm not like big into, you know, there's lots of companies out there that offer consulting kind of, and it's, it's expensive and I don't think it's really necessary. And I hate to, I hate to say this for all my friends that offer like the higher end consulting, but I think the best way to really learn something is to do it on your own. So if you're asking for advice, I think the best way to do it is to kind of ask for like a broad picture of, of whatever you're trying to, to accomplish, right? Mm-hmm. And then try yourself because the only way to really advance at something is to do it yourself and get better. So if I'm asking for advice, let's say from one of my friends who is really good with Google AdWords, which is a way to advertise on Google, I'm not going to ask him to set up all of my advertising yeah. campaigns and to track it for me and to like literally do all the work. I'm not going to, I don't want that. I want them to, when I ask for advice, it's like very brief. Okay. Can you give me the overview? What should I avoid? What should I do? Right. And then I do it myself. And then maybe a few months from a few months later, I'll go back and say, these are my yeah. results. Can you help me now? But no one likes, you know, even if they're the most generous person in the world, th- th- there's nothing worse than someone that's just constantly yes. trying to get, you know, information out of you every time they see you. And then what you said that second time you talked to that person. And right. Here are my results. Yes. Yeah. And I love that. I mean, right. yeah, that's the best conversation ever. I'm sure yeah. you know if you help someone and they come back like, hey, right. that talk we had three months ago that you might have forgot about, yeah. that they tell you like that changed everything. Like that's the best. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, the opposite of that, I was talking with Rachel Mazza. I don't know if you've met her. She's, she's it. around town here. And uh, people that ask and then don't do it and then come back and ask again. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. She calls them ask holes. Yep. You know, and <laughs> yep. it's, it's true, man. If, if, but if people see that you're actually, you know, you're respectful with their time. Mm -hmm. you're actually applying the advice and then you're coming back for pointers a little further down the road that's usually fun for that person if they have a little time they'll probably enjoy it it's the best and 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 stuff like okay so people aren't really asking me for advice when they when they like join my course for example but in a way they are because they want to learn e-commerce from me so what i love is when people join and don't ask me any questions and then i hear from them three months later hey man i'm making x amount of dollars or whatever it is you know like i just hit my goals and like that's i I love stuff like that because it's kind of people like teaching people and then instead of them just constantly like like, you know, well, how do I do this and that? And asking every little specific point, doing it themselves, and then, you know, maybe asking like an advanced level question, you're just coming back to say thanks. Yeah. And a good example of that is like, we actually talked about this yesterday during um, when we were playing your game uh, about mentoring, right? Like different mentors. And I always say my biggest mentor in life is one of my uncles, my dad's brother. And he's a guy that I literally probably saw twice a year growing up. So to people like that think of mentors, that's right. most people think of someone that they're always with, that's always helping them. I saw him usually on Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve, and he's a guy that owns a really successful business in Manhattan. Um, I really looked up to him when I was a kid because 
he had, you know, really nice things and he lived like a kind of different lifestyle. I, I've said this before, but like my family was definitely, I'd say upper middle class, but his was in a different level. And I would ask him when I was five years old, why do you have these nice cars? Why do you have these houses? Like, what are you doing? And he told me I left my job when I was like, I think around in his mid twenties, I took a chance. I started my own business and it paid off. And just something like that, like that was like mentoring to me. I was like, okay, now I understand. I saw it that I saw that it was real and I saw it was someone that I trusted. And then I would ask him every year, basically on Thanksgiving and Christmas, I wouldn't call him. I wouldn't email him. I wouldn't ask him a million questions. I didn't try to have him start a business for me, but I would ask very specific things, maybe how to invest money yeah. or like when's a good time to like actually start thinking about starting a family even, or when's a good time to hire employees. And it would be seriously twice a year. And those answers from a few questions were worth gold to me. So instead of like asking the very specifics where, you know, I could figure it out myself, I wanted an overview from someone that was successful. So going back to even advice from, from a mentor, I think like a very almost distant approach, like look to that person and follow what they do, but don't try to copy, don't try to mm -hmm. copycat them. I would never own the business he owns right. and I wouldn't call him every day, wasting his time basically. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of people out there who have mentors that they've never met in person mm -hmm. and they watch YouTube videos, they read their biographies and things like that. And it's still totally valuable. Oh yeah. I, I, a lot of the best advice I've gotten is from people I've never met, you know, the Richard Branson's, the Conrad Hilton's. You know, you just, you can get this insight into how they operate, how they think, and how that differs from the people that have other results, right? Mm -hmm. I want to ask you too about your uncle, besides advice on, you know, logistics and things like that. What did you see in him as far as, did he have habits that were different? Did he carry himself different? What was, what else was different? He seemed much more relaxed than everyone I knew that worked. I could say that. We would go to his, uh, you know, his house every year, let's say for, for Christmas Eve, and he'd make, I don't know, lobsters for everyone, and just yeah. have like this this dinner that was, I look forward to every year because it was the best food I would eat. And meanwhile, with like, you know, 30 people in his huge house, he was the most relaxed, carefree guy, just having a great time and, um, you know, really living a stress-free life. And I saw that and that was very clear to me while a lot of other people just didn't look as happy, honestly. Like yeah. that, that was a big thing. I noticed he was happy. And then regarding habits, that was a question I asked him, you know, and he would tell me like he hustled. He wasn't a guy and he's not a guy still that owns a business that he just pops in and out of. He would go into, his business is located in Long Island City, which is in Queens, and he'd wake up and drive in there at 5 a.m. every day and manage a huge team. And, mm -hmm. you know, he was a hustler. Like he had a routine that he stuck to. And that's why his business was successful. And one thing he told me from probably when I was five or six years old is that the reason his business excelled over all his competitors, which he has many, is because every time he would agree to a deal, he would always do it. So he would always follow through on it. It would always deliver the work, even if it, in the beginning when he was still not even sure what he was doing and learning and he would lose money, yeah. he would still do the job correctly. So really building a reputation for yourself, that was a huge lesson I got from him, seriously, from one conversation too. And it was something that stuck with me through life. So right. again, going back to that, like not needing a mentor every day, but learning that reputation is everything and if you really are like a man of your word and you do what you say you're going to do you'll get ahead in life it's, just, it's really that simple like you just do what you say you're going to do don't be a flake don't right. tell don't over promise under deliver and that's really what it takes to be successful you know i think that in the business world it's funny because people have this idea that you have to be some kind of genius to get ahead but i totally agree with you if you are just not a flake I don't know what the exact percentage is, but I would say that puts you ahead of probably 75% of the people oh, yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's unbelievable to me. Even at a, once you get into like people that have been doing business a long time, you still bump into these people who just, they don't call you back, they don't show up, mm -hmm. or they're late all the time or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a really easy way to, well, it's not, I wouldn't call it easy. It's a way to stand out that just involves effort. Yep. And a little bit of discipline, you know, saying yeah. this is how I'm going to be. It doesn't have anything to do with being the smartest. No, especially that. I mean, that's a huge thing. Like, I think being the smartest is a huge disadvantage. And I honestly, like, I know I'm definitely nowhere near the smartest guy in the world. And I think the people that are too smart, they're almost too smart for their own good. Because what happens is once you get to a certain level of, like, intelligence, people are constantly second guessing everything. And you can, you can talk yourself out of any business idea. It's, or anything in life. I mean, there's, you'll always find an argument if you think enough about it. So I think one of the reasons that I'm successful really across like lots of different business models is because I don't overthink things. So I take a very simple approach and I honestly like I'll have an idea. I'll look out there to validate my idea to see if other people are doing it and making money. And then instead of thinking like, oh, they got lucky or maybe like I don't guess why they're successful. I see what they're doing and then I do it myself. 
And I really think it's that simple and it, like anyone could do it. So it's not because I'm smart. It's because I don't overthink different businesses and yeah. I don't think, oh, well, maybe this person was smarter than me. I just know that people that have a lot of money, including my uncle, he, he'll admit he's not the smartest guy in the world and he has a massive business, but it's because he took that chance when he left his job. And this, like, I think back in the seventies, he was making over six figures. So he had a high paying job and he left it to bet on himself. And a lot of it yeah. comes to betting on yourself and then not second guessing that decision. Right. You really have to trust yourself more than anyone else. And that's really just a different kind of intelligence. I mm-hmm. mean, realizing that usually, well, first of all, if you know what the worst case scenario is, if, if you're investing a certain amount of money and time and starting a business mm-hmm. and it doesn't work out, you know, is it the end of the world or will you just be a little bit smarter and you can go try something else, right? Yeah. And you reminded me when you were talking about that, uh, there was a lady who, there's a place called Hardware Sales in Bellingham, Washington. That's where I'm from. And they're this massive hardware store and they do a ton of sales online. Um, but they've been there through, I think we had an Ace hardware. We've got a Lowe's. We had a home base, I think. I mean, some of the big chains came and went. Lowe's is still there. Home Depot's still there. And hardware sales made it through all of that. And if I, I, I might be butchering the story a little bit, but she, she passed away a few years ago and she worked there every day until she was 94, maybe something like that. And she would show up at 6 a.m. every day. She had the messiest desk I've ever seen in my life. Literally the worst one I've ever seen. And her husband and her owned it together originally. He passed away pretty young back in the 60s or 70s or something and then she just carried it on with her I believe sons and grandsons my mom is a teacher she taught one of her grandsons wow Uh, so I went in there to meet with this grandson that used to be in my mom's eighth grade class because I had a flea market and we were going to talk about hey you know do you have some clearance stuff you want to get rid of maybe I can sell it at my flea market whatever so we're walking around upstairs he's going through some stuff in the office and I had a minute I was waiting for him to go get a file or something and I see Alta sitting there. And the only reason I even knew who she was was she got the like Lifetime Achievement Award at the Chamber of Commerce banquet that I just happened to go to like two years before that. And so I see her sitting there. And I said, like, what the heck? You know, I got a minute. And I walk over there and I go, hi, Alta, how are you? You know, and she goes, oh, kind of like the who are you look, you know. And I said, my name's Dan. We've never met, but I was at the banquet when you won the award and all that. And just wanted to say hi. I'm just, you know, talking to your grandson. And I said, can I ask you a question? You guys have been here. You've made it through all these giant chains that have killed so many local hardware stores you're still here and i know so many people that prefer to shop here to any of those chains what's your secret you know and she goes she thought about it for a couple seconds and she goes you know we try things and if it works we keep doing it and if it doesn't we stop doing that and we try something else that's it that's business in a nutshell yeah yeah Yeah. really (laughs) that successful business is all wrapped up into a few sentences yeah yeah so if you think that you need an mba or something to get started forget that yep (laughs) you know i mean they are uh and you know it was such a cool memory for me talk about mentors i met her once in my life yep and i will never forget that yep and the other thing i heard about her later from people who used to work there Uh, when she rarely would go on vacation or take any kind of holidays, but I want to say maybe Christmas or something, she would take a little bit of time off. And that was their chance every year. They would go through her desk because she literally, I mean, I'm talking like six to 12 inches of papers on the whole desk surface. And I don't, she probably knew where stuff was, but it looked like a nightmare. And they would go through all of it looking for money. (laughs) And I heard they would find like at least $1,000 every time. Wow. And then they would go deposit that in the bank. Because she would just, I actually, I forgot to tell you, when I walked up to talk to her, what she was doing was counting these giant stacks of cash. Oh, I love that. It was like Like a boss. Straight out of a movie. Yeah. You know? And she's just got this stack of ones over here and the fives here and the tens and the twenties. And and she was herself counting, I think it was the bank drop. Yep. It was just one of the coolest experiences. So yeah, just get started. Just get started and constantly test and tweak. And that's what people don't realize too. Like let's say like prior to launching something, a lot of people think it has to be perfect, right? So what I mean by launching is when you officially publish your website or set up your e-commerce store, whatever it is, people want perfection right away. I don't even get anywhere near perfection because if, yeah. you, if you go for that, you'll never do anything. Right. There's always time to go back and change things. Yeah. And, and like Dan mentioned earlier, the people that are going to give you the feedback that matters and tell you what changes you should make are going to be paying customers, not your family and friends before 
before you, you know, actually turn your idea into reality. Just do it on your own. Yeah. And, you know, go with your, your gut instinct because you know better than anyone at first. And from there, just follow your customer's feedback. That's yeah. really the only way to do it. And don't, you know, don't be like, like the lady told Dan, like if things have to, if you want to try new things, try them. And if something stops working, then it's time to pivot. Maybe you have to change your direction. Maybe you have to like try something new and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. That's business. Just and, like life. And getting involved in that first business that doesn't work might expose you to another niche or a different related business that you never even knew existed. And there's plenty of stories yeah. like that. I mean, that's, so that's how I transitioned into online business. I was actually running an offline business straight out of college. I had bought a delivery route for a bakery in Brooklyn. I was driving around delivering all these products. It was a nightmare because I was stuck in traffic all day. I was dealing with these store managers who were just, you know, like they, they weren't happy with their jobs. So they weren't happy with me as a 21 year old kid. Taking that, it out on you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that business business though allowed me to transition into e-commerce where I started selling those products online. So just because one thing, you know, isn't for you, who knows what it'll lead to. Like one everyone says that one door will open another, which will open another and another and another. So just try something, yeah. do anything. I've heard you ever heard of the corridor effect? No. It's one of my favorite business concepts. It's basically at the beginning like you were delivering these things to bakeries, is that right? No, I was buying from a bakery and then I was delivering to larger supermarkets. Oh, okay. Yeah. So You've got your eye, you're looking down this corridor and your goal is the door at the end of the corridor, right? And you've got your plan to get there. You know how many steps it's going to take, whatever. That's the goal and you can see it. So you start walking towards it. As you're walking towards it, you know, you think of like a big school or a hospital or something. You're walking down this hallway and then you're at, all of a sudden you're at an intersection and you can look to your right and your left and you can see options that you couldn't see at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But because you started going towards that first door, you start seeing things along the way, like the e-commerce business Mm -hmm. or whatever. Yep. So yeah, it's just another reason to just get started. And if you think that going, here comes the planes, yep. the international <laughs> flights, um, they're also building some condos over there. I don't know if you can hear that. So if you're listening, there are rooms available in Shanghai. <laughs> um, boy, where was I? I got de- Talking de- about the corridor effect and how different doors open effect, for the Different e-commerce. doors, you. Um, yeah, so what I wanted to get into at some point was um, you seem to be one of those guys that gets going and the corridor effect has happened to you. In the very beginning, when you started delivering these, um, I think a lot of people that know of you, people that are in your course, even if they haven't met you yet, you've got this like mystique around you now. Mm. It might be like embarrassing for me to say that to you, but you do. (laughs) Like people think that you have this Midas touch. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm curious about is in the beginning when you were delivering and then when you started your e-commerce, was it, you know, were you this wonder boy with the Midas touch or were you out there in a beat up? pickup truck doing this stuff yourself i mean well that was when i had no money i was 21 so yeah i mean it was a beat up truck and i was going around and you know like i'm never one to complain about things so even then when i like i was saying i wasn't happy with what i was doing but every like it's i don't know it sounds kind of cocky but everything in my life has always worked out so even if things aren't the best i always know something will happen because I, maybe it's just having a positive attitude and things come to you. And like, I'm not a whole like law of attraction guy, but I do believe if you have a positive attitude, things will work out. And I believe if you think negatively, then negative things are going to happen just because maybe the universe isn't going to attract it to you. But if you're negative, you're going to get negative results. I really, it's that simple. So even when I was doing that, I wasn't happy with what I was doing, but I knew there'd be something else. So yeah. I was doing that. I was looking into different franchises to open. So I was st- like, I was keeping my mind open. I wasn't going home after driving around in an old van, delivering bakery products, thinking, oh, my life sucks. Right. Why did I buy this? I was thinking, well, what's next? How can I change this into something good? And what happened then, you know, the book, The 4-Hour Workweek came out. I read that and that opened the door for me. So just constantly keep your mind open. Always be reading. You should listen to podcasts. But one thing I should say a lot of people get stuck in is listening to podcasts and reading and just making that their like their dream kind of instead of a reality. Right. Everything you read, everything you listen that applies to you, do something about it. That's where the real action comes in. That's where your life's going to change. Yeah. And you know... Um Two things I want to say, but first of all, when somebody, like what I want to really be careful of and help people with is if there's anybody out there listening to this that thinks that Anton was the whiz kid and he did something that's not available to do anymore and all that kind of stuff, you know, that's really doing a discredit to all the hard work and Mm -hmm. effort that Anton has put in and keeping your mind open, like you said. When you put people that are role models to you, when you put them too much up on a pedestal, you're you're kind of implying that it's not possible for you. And if you really look into people's story, the nitty gritty stuff, the Mike Tyson's, the Richard Branson's, whatever, the J.K. Rowling, Mm -hmm. uh, her story is amazing. If you look into biographies, you start seeing the struggles these people went through. Jim Carrey, I think it was on the roof of his van. He taped a check to himself for, I think, $10 million up there when he was just some guy going to auditions, you know? And if you understand that your heroes and role models went through all that stuff, then you realize 
you are where they were and you can get where they got. It's mm-hmm. just doing what they did. Yeah. You know? the, the percentage of successful people that are successful because things were given to them is so small. When it comes to like this online business community, the business community as a whole, the people that just get stuff, you know, like, oh, their parents had a business, so that's why they're successful or something like that. Those aren't the type of people that I know. Those aren't the type of people that I hang out with. Everyone's earned it themselves. Yeah. And it's because they've had a positive attitude. Even when they're in a really crappy situation, they're looking for opportunity. So opportunity really is everywhere. And let's go back to like, okay, talking about different doors opening from, you you know, just like that, that perspective. For example, with e-commerce. So I'm involved with e-commerce. I've been doing it since 2007. I sold a few businesses. I started building some more. And then in, I think like 2000. 12 maybe I started posting on different forums and I was on business forums and I was talking about e-commerce and I saw that a lot of like these topics were kind of just ridiculous and it was stuff that I didn't do myself I knew a lot of the information wasn't really like the best out there so I started answering posts and people like what I had to say so what people started asking me can you give me coaching you know can I work with you can you basically mentor me and I you know I said no because I don't have the time right. but then I, I saw an opportunity so just by being out there and posting on forums I saw an opportunity people asking questions one advice okay I'm going to record my knowledge and I'm going to put it into a video course and into an online community that'll help people that want to be helped. So did I start like my dropshipping course that's really successful now because like I, I'm lucky? No, I saw an opportunity because yeah. I was active in an online community and people wanted it. So there's opportunity everywhere. It yeah. just keeps snowballing. The, the retreat I'm doing now, this thing that's happening in Chiang Mai, I'm doing it because when I was traveling through Southeast Asia a year and a half ago, I met a guy named Johnny. I taught him about e-commerce. He started a successful business. I moved out here for a bit because the online community was so good. And now I came back, you know, a year and a half later to run a retreat. So there, there, like there's opportunities everywhere. It's not about luck. It's not about who you know. It's about just seeing opportunities and running with it. And yeah. take, like we talked about back in the beginning, take action on when there's an opportunity. The, the, the retreat we're doing now, the idea from this came from when Johnny and I were down in Koh Lanta. So that's in the south of Thailand, if anyone doesn't know. Beautiful island with some of the best scuba diving in the world. I'm down there with my friend. We're scuba diving. My friend has a podcast. We're sitting on the beach. I'm drinking a beer. We're recording a podcast. And I said, you know, this life is so amazing. I wish people from the forum, from my forum, could come out here. And I said, you know what? I'm going to invite people out here. I want to get them out here. So based on that one conversation, while I was drinking a beer with my friend on the beach, there's now over 100 people coming to Chiang to learn more about e-commerce yeah. and to make their stores earn more money. So it's not about luck. It's not about having things handed to you. It's about just having an idea and then doing something about it. Right. I just heard it was 70 like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it's over 100 yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. That's great, man. That's so cool. And you just made it happen. Mm-hmm. And you know, let's give Johnny a shout out. Uh, Travel Like a Boss podcast, mm-hmm. johnnyfd.com. Yep. Check him out. He's got a lot of great content. If you want to know about the immigration raid, yeah. uh, was that yesterday or the day before? I think a few days ago. He yeah. was live blogging about it. Yeah, he got, well, he didn't get thrown in a van, but a bunch of other people yeah. did. He was smart enough to say, I'm not getting in the van unless you arrest me. Yeah. Um, anyway, it all worked out fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's entertaining stuff. He's yeah. got a lot of great content. Um, yeah, good stuff. And, and Johnny has helped a lot of people out too. Oh yeah. I know he's exposed a lot of people to your course in yep. particular. Yeah, too. definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And, yeah. He's found success with it. He tells people about it. And then what he does that I think is amazing and I'm really grateful for is he actually helps people that sign up. So I was saying, yeah. I don't actually get that many questions, but a lot of people will actually show up here in Chiang Mai, reach out to Johnny and he's totally cool with like just sitting down with them, taking a look at their e-commerce stores and helping them out. So I'm really grateful for that because it's helping my community grow also and it's helping members that really just want to excel and learn more yeah yeah it's true it, it, he's put a lot of stuff out there mm-hmm. i started following johnny before i came over to chiang mai um mostly just about chiang mai living and just for that inspiration of somebody who's done it right you know and i wound up actually funny enough in the same room that he had in one of his video reviews uh, where he said like this is my whale couch yep. at, the place, <laughs> at a place called the pacific I moved in the Pacific and then he moved out and I somehow transferred to that room because it was my corner room was too hot. Mm. And I went, wow, man, I, I was watching this guy. Now I literally, that's my whale couch. So funny. It's so funny. Yeah. yeah. I had a, I have a vision board too. And a, I used to have a picture of the courtyard at Pun Space on the, the vision board. Nice. You know, it's like, that's where I'm going. Yep. You know, and it happened. Um, who? Oh, yeah. Another thing I want to mention: if your business does fail, whether it's, it, you know, whatever, it could be a dance studio, an online business, or whatever. You put some money into it, you lose the money. You know, it could be publicly humiliating for a little while, and all that kind of stuff. Um, the funny thing to me is, you know, that means whatever you want it to mean, right? Like fact, you started a business. Fact, you put money into it. Fact, it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Okay, those are all facts. 
the rest of it, what that means and what you, what story you tell about that is all up to you. And I have a friend, whenever he screwed up and lost money, we were both in real estate. He was also messing around with some day trading. Whenever he lost like a couple thousand bucks, you know, lost a deposit on a property or something like that, he'd be like, hey, guess what? I just bought a seminar. I said, that's a great way yeah. to go. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, people spend a lot of money on seminars. And oh, yeah. What does an MBA cost? What right. is a, What does even a bachelor's degree or an associate's degree cost, right? People think that it's, they're like impressed if you put $40,000 into getting a degree. Mm-hmm. But if you lose $4,000 on an attempt to start a yeah, business. Yeah, on a bet on yourself. What's I mean, the difference? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and I guarantee you learn a lot when you do that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. What's the real risk, you know? There's really, that's one big thing that the four hour work week pointed out to me too. I remember when I read that one of the chapters was about what's the worst case scenario, you know? So like, let's say you invest, let's say you quit your job and you invest, I don't know, whatever it is, like a thousand, two thousand, up to $10,000 into a business. What's the worst thing that could possibly happen? And when people actually like, actually write down, like, what's the worst thing that could happen? And for me at that time, when I was 21, didn't have much to like, you know, much to really lose. It was that, okay, I moved back in with my parents and I start over I'm like, okay, I could take that chance. Mm -hmm. And I know different people are different situations. So maybe if you're like working at a full-time job and you're making a lot of money right now and you have a family, it's a little different. You're not going to risk everything, but maybe you could, you know, stay up an extra three or four hours a night for a while and really hustle at it. So there's always opportunity. There's always opportunity. Yeah. You know, I want to ask you too, again, back to the whole Midas touch thing. Yeah. Failure yep. is also something that long term can be a benefit, really. Yep. And I got to plug my game real quick. There's a space that's called falling forward. And mm-hmm. if you land on that space, you go to what's called the forge and you miss a turn. It's kind of like the jail and Monopoly, except when you get out of the forge, you're basically turbocharged. So if you roll a four, you can go either four or five spaces. You mm-hmm. can add one. And the idea is you had some kind of hardship, setback, failure, whatever. You get stuck for a little while. You know, you sit there and feel sorry for yourself or you're recovering financially, whatever it is. And uh, then once you're back on your feet and out there taking action again, you're tougher, you're more effective, you're wiser. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about failure and learning from it? Have you had any experiences you want to mention? Yeah, I've had different failures. And this is one thing you said, like people will fail sometimes. And then what should, like, should you, does that mean you should give up? Does that mean you're not cut out to be in your own business? And no, because once you do reach success, once you're successful, no one's going to talk about your failures. No one's going to remember that. And that's really how it works. I think like every successful person I know has been through, you know, different points in their life where they're, you know, really high and they're really low. That you hear it all the time. Being an entrepreneur is a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you're doing great. Sometimes you're not. I've had some setbacks. I've had times that PayPal has hold over 50, held over $50,000 from me wow. where I've needed it to send to my suppliers. And, you know, I've had to borrow money and like really been, I mean, some really stressful times. So I've ran into situations like that, but there's always ways to get around it. And I, like you said earlier, even if a business has to be, let's say shut down or pivoted, it's not a failure. It's learning. So you're never actually failing. I mean, there's always ways I think to, to get something out of it. And even if all you get out of it is that learning experience, it's still a win. So something else that people could consider a failure. Once I started making a lot of money online, I invested a lot of money offline into an offline business that I was a part owner in. And it ended up really, it was doing okay. It was making some money. But the time that I, myself, my business partners had to put into it was just absurd compared to my online businesses. Mm -hmm. So not only did I actually have to invest a lot of cash, which I didn't with my online businesses, I also had to invest a ton of time. And because I had contracts with different locations, I also like, I was committed to people. So I couldn't just say, okay, I'm done. And like throw my hands in the air and, you know, kind of walk away from it. I had, I ended up selling the business. What was that? It was a, it was a digital signage company. So we would go into Dunkin' Donuts locations in New York and we'd install LCD displays. Displays, yeah. And then we would sell advertising space on them to local businesses. So oh. they would display things like local news, local weather, and then ads for different businesses in the towns would pop up. And was that like a revenue share with Dunkin' Donuts and you? Or it something? actually wasn't. No, they let us put in the displays simply because part of the ads, as it would scroll through the ads, it showed like weather and news. And really? Then, yeah. And then also we would promote their their things too. So let's say oh, like okay, a new okay, like okay. donut came out that month or new flavored coffee. All right. We so would, they would, didn't have to pay for the expense. Exactly. Sign. Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, it. I, it, I, think, cool. I think it was a good deal for us, but... It was, it, it was a lot of work. It surprises me they didn't ask for it, something. It surprises me too. But we, uh, you know, we had to put out money for a big server. We had to buy different yeah. uh, computers for each display. We had to buy the displays. We had to pay an electrician to go in and install them. And it was something that I was really like optimistic on. But in the end, it cost me a lot of time. And I pretty much broke even. So... I consider that a failure, but again, I didn't think like, oh man, what am I doing? I didn't get down on myself. I thought, how can I change things? And again, I had contracts, so I wasn't about to walk away from it. I sold the business, not to make money, but just to you know be away from it, and that was it. Then I moved on. So 
yeah, maybe it's a failure, but you, you learn. And I, and what I learned then that I don't want to do business offline anymore. Right. So yeah, it was a good experience. It made your, your belief exactly. in the, the yeah. e-commerce thing that yeah. was more solid. Some other things like failures, like I like to gamble. So <laughs> when I was young and I was making a lot of money, I was going to Vegas a lot and I lost a lot of money gambling. And now I know don't go to the casinos as much. So right. it's something that I'm happy I uh, got out of the way when I was, you know, 21, 22, 23 years old, but yeah. live and learn. So yeah. So did you just, you just had the discipline to just stop? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. Well, <laughs> I know some people can't. So. Yeah. No, I'm I'm pretty good with that. I have an addictive di- I have an addictive personality, but I know when it's time to stop at the same time. Okay, so, cool. yeah, things happen. Like you know, lost some. Like I was making a lot of money, and I kind of thought it was okay to lose a lot of money. Yeah. And then you know, once like that PayPal thing happened, and they held a bunch of cash, I was like, Ooh. what am I doing? Like, why am I? That could have been. Re- yeah, resource. exactly. I could have so I could have that and so much more just sitting you know in the in the account. But instead, like I'm just playing cards and just being an idiot. You know, like partying too much. So I learned. I think at like 23 years old, if not. 22 that that's not what I wanted to do so it's kind of a good experience you know so yeah I lost a lot of money gambling I had to borrow money to kind of get my business out of debt but it yeah. was within the first two years and that lesson from very early on in business basically has changed the way I've done business for the past yeah. six or seven years and made me like so much wiser so sometimes failure is a good thing it's I'm much happier it happened then than it did now so or, do you try to hold more reserves now oh yeah now yeah. I'm, I'm an amazing say like I, my saving right. habits are completely different and yeah it, that's it's, interesting you went through that I went through something really similar and uh, sorry to interrupt you no it's fine but I think our generation in general we're the whole like easy credit card application thing mm-hmm. and you know car loan everybody's got the shiny new car that they're in debt for five or ten years on and all that stuff uh, if you rewind a couple generations, like my grandpa lived through the tail end of the depression. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a World War II vet, and when he was a kid growing up, they were still in that depression. He was born in the 30s. And, uh, you know, this is back when they rationed everything from like gasoline to shoes, right? And uh, that guy lived very much within his means. Nobody, I don't know if maybe somebody knew, I didn't really know what his means were, but I saw, you know, a pretty humble house in um, Amherst, New York, mm-hmm. just outside of Buffalo. And, uh, you know, he went golfing all the time, but it was at the city course, you know, and he drove this Chevy Chevette, I think it was, forever. And then the big splurge that surprised everybody was when he bought my grandma uh, um, Chrysler LeBaron, mm-hmm. which is like Tom, Tom Green, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a LeBaron. Yeah. And, but it was a convertible, so it wasn't very practical, especially upstate New York, right? But it was, I don't know if it was an anniversary or birthday thing for my grandma or what, but everybody went, whoa, grandpa bought a convertible? That's, that shocked us. You know, and then when he passed away, I think I'm remembering roughly right. He had about a half a million dollars cash. Nice, yeah, yeah. And and I, whoa. So when he was 80 years old, yep. he had a half a million dollars sitting there, and he was still, you know, keeping it for a rainy day. Mm-hmm. And now you've got plenty of people our age. You're, I don't actually know how old you are, but yeah, we're be about, 30 in a few weeks. Okay, I'm yeah. 33. Yeah, a lot of people our age literally have a negative net worth. They have student loans still. Yep. They have a car loan. They have a mortgage that's like, if not 100% of the value of their real estate, it's really close. Or if they bought it before oh, the bubble yeah. burst, their loan might be more than the house is worth. Anyway, they have this negative net worth. And boy, when you have a, a negative net worth, n- not much in cash reserves, if you lose your job, you're done. Yeah. what are you going to do? Yeah, bankrupt. Well, yeah. yeah. Or if you're, if you're running a business and you have a cash flow crunch like yep. that, maybe you'll get lucky and be able to scrounge up some money mm-hmm. for a bridge loan or something. Yep. But but man, wouldn't it be better to have the reserves there so yeah. that you know, you know you're good? One thing that I've noticed from a lot of people that I've met out here in Chiang Mai and Thailand, which if anyone's listening to this and let's say like you're in debt and you want to change your life and you eventually do start a business that's generating some money, a lot of people come here to get themselves out of debt. Yeah. I've had that conversation with so many people because let's say even uh, you can live here for almost nothing, but let's say you want to live like a nice lifestyle, like yeah. all the meals out, live in a nice place, like going to the pools, working in a co-working space. You could do that with 1500 US dollars or less a month like it's very doable and that's not even like you know that that's kind of like a big budget for a lot of people here and once you live in a place like this where you could focus a hundred percent on your business if you really like spend enough time at it and I don't want to say get lucky but if you like you're doing the right things Mm -hmm. and putting that time into it it's very possible to make more than you were making back at your old job if you're making like an average salary and you could pay off your debt and just start saving money and there's like it's a great reason to live here and I really respect everyone that comes here with huge student loan debt huge credit card debt and bad credit and they're here to actually change their financial situation so yeah. huge mean, benefit of living here we both know a guy that he, he his situation just a, I don't know five six months ago or something was he had some debt and he was living in an expensive part of the world and his debt was getting a little bit bigger every month you know it wasn't like huge mm-hmm. terrible but it was going know, the wrong direction yeah. yeah and then he came here and now it's getting a little bit smaller every yep. month. you know it's just 
that's a whole different world. Yep. Right? And I mean, honestly, you're right. 1500, you can live like a, king. a good life. A good I mean, life. you can live just fine on 600. Yep. I have friends in this, I mean, this, I forget that not everybody has hung out in Chiang Mai and this will blow your mind. Right. <laughs> if you haven't heard this, I have friends on the third floor of the building we're talking in right now. Uh, one guy in particular is paying 3,300 baht a month for his room and it's a studio, but it's fine. It's nice. He's got a balcony that looks over the trees. Uh, that is just over a hundred dollars us. That's what is that? Like $108 or something like that a month. And, uh, then he pays probably like three or $4 a month for water. Mm -hmm. I mean, utilities are nothing. And, and he just has a fan, so he's not even paying for AC. Yeah. And I mean, we've got a pool here. Yeah, a huge pool. It's yeah. not anything. It's, like, I know it sounds fake. Like, if I was listening to yeah. this before I came here, I wouldn't believe it. But it's not like you're living in some, like, hole in the ground with, like, bugs running around. It's a beautiful place with, an, with amazing surroundings. So, yeah. yeah. Now, it's not a hole in the ground, but there are bugs. Are there? Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't like bugs. I don't like bugs. I had to stay away from that. We're on the sixth floor, so it's a lot better. Okay. But my dog, I just got a rescue dog named Ping Pong and he really likes the cicadas. Do you know what those are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They look like a lot like a house fly, except for like hundred times huge. bigger yeah. and uh, he likes catching them and then they make this weird screaming noise yep. and yep. <laughs> freak them out yeah. yeah and you know but then some of the bugs are like awesome butterflies that are as big as your hand yeah well that's different I'm okay with them yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah we don't have I've never seen anything scary no scorpions up here yeah no scary spiders this high up mm-hmm. on the sixth floor so if actually my mom is going to be coming over in the winter and she's thinking about doing the thing that couple you mentioned you yep. know being here for maybe half the year yeah you can get a retirement visa for yes, that yes yeah. absolutely uh, I think you just show them your month, you know, your pension or yep. whatever it is. And uh, she really likes that I'm on the sixth floor. She's like, yeah, I want something up a couple floors because I don't have to worry about snakes or anything coming in my window. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the lifestyle here is amazing. And it's not the only place, you know, oh, no. but, but it's kind of it's might be the best place. In I've got to say, I, I, like at this point, being out here a year and a half since travel so easy, I've been to like all the local countries. I've been to a lot of places and they're great to just travel to. But like as far as quality of life, cost of living, and networking, mm-hmm. this this is it. This is the place to be. Yeah, Chiang Mai is the place to be. Yeah. Great starting point if you're trying to transition into Southeast Asia. You know, and a lot of people are using it as a home base, mm-hmm. and they'll keep an apartment here. Like that that was kind of an extreme example, $100 a month. I pay about $300 a month before utilities, which again are only like 50 bucks yep. for everything. For a huge apartment. Yeah. And you know, and we're splitting this two ways here. So mm-hmm. my portion is about 150 a month with utilities. I'm under 200 a month. Yep. <laughs> so this is my home base. And if I wanted to go check out Bali or something, you know, I can do it and I don't have this huge overhead. I don't have like a three bedroom house back in the yeah. States. You're not going to be thinking about your $1,200 mortgage payment while, right. you're, yeah, while yeah. you're sitting on the beach you know, in another right. country. Yeah. I mean, what I pay for this place is about you could pay that for a storage unit back in the U.S. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer. You should post some photos of the uh, the view from here. <laughs> yeah, I will. Yeah. Or probably I will if I yeah. remember. But, yeah. you know, if I forget, I, my Facebook's public, too. I've got pictures of the dog I mentioned uh-huh. and the view off of here. It's just facebook.com slash Dan T. O'Donnell. Um, yeah, and then all these episodes are at odonlife.com. And I will try to remember to post yeah. pictures of the view. <laughs> And uh, pictures of what Anton's been up to. Yep. Now, okay, now we're talking about Asia and stuff. And I know you spent some time in South America. Mm-hmm. Um, where are a couple of your favorite places? And that's kind of been done a million times. So, and what was your favorite thing to do there? That's what I really want to know. Yeah, uh, like I said, I've been traveling to a bunch of different ones, but Chiang Mai, it like I I, I love it. So my my thing is I didn't want to move out here. And I didn't want to be one of the people that comes and never leaves only because like it is very, it's so easy to get comfortable because it's such a great place. But at the same time, when I first came out here about 18 months ago, it was the first time I had left the States besides going to Mexico for spring break in oh, college. Yeah, right. yeah. So I didn't want to come here and like have this be like, oh, wow, I found this and I don't want to leave. But after traveling so much, I have to say that this place is like, it, it's really like, it's surreal. Uh, that's why I want people to see these photos. Just looking around right now, it's, it's yeah, a gorgeous yeah. spot. It's basically sunny every day. We have the rainy season here where it rains for like an hour and or so. I actually like it. I do too. It's kind of relaxing. <laughs> it's yeah, nice. it's nice. You can go outside without sweating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're in front of a coffee shop. It just looks cool. Like these like monsoon yeah. downpours for, you know, they're quick. And then, and then you might see a rainbow. Yeah, and then know, it's like sunny it. out again and it's beautiful and you go for a motorbike ride. But right. yeah, I love Chiang Mai because it's so close to nature also. So the city itself isn't big, but it's big enough so you don't feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. 
there. You don't yeah. feel like you're oh, in some yeah. really like poor, depressed, you know, third world country. You feel like basically like I feel like I'm at home. So that's great. But then there are these places. Um, what is it called? There's a place that I used to go to when I lived here called I think Lime Leaf, and it's in Echo Lodge, and it's about an hour motorbike ride outside of town. Then you park your motorbikes and you go trekking for an hour, and then you're up at this resort with all these huts, and oh. yeah, it's the coolest thing ever. So you, I used to go up there with a bunch of friends, and they have a basically you sleep there for the night. They have a bunch of beers, a bunch of waters, and stuff like that. They roast a pig for you for dinner, and you're up like in the middle of this beautiful mountain wow. range, just chilling out on these huge decks. Cool. Yeah, they have a bunch of dogs there that just come and hang out with you. It's just like stuff like that, and I think. I, I don't remember, but like maybe five or ten dollars per person, just something ridiculously cheap like that. And it's for like all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you pay for the beer, but the food is included in the lodging. It's, really? Yeah, it's insane. It's That's insane. like the price of a hostel in Bangkok. Exactly. Well, it's basically what it is. Is like a tribe that has <laughs> this. Yeah, it's like a hill tribe that has this space that people go to. Wow. So yeah, you book, you do book it in advance, so you make sure you have a spot, and then just go up there with a huge group, and it's it's so cool. So like things like that. Like that's why I love Chiang Mai. Like these weekend trips, like the waterfalls. Yeah. Um, you know, you could just get on your motorbike and take a half hour ride and even things like Doi Satep which is the big temple here yep. and uh, you could just like some, some mornings I wake up early I wake up early every morning but some mornings I don't want to start working right away and I'll ride my motorbike up to the top of the mountain yeah. and just look down on the city it's awesome it's such a cool view yeah. up there and once you get up there the air temperature really drops down because it's higher up yeah. so it's just it's a really cool you ride you need to bring a coat usually. yeah 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 it gets, it gets chilly up there it's weird and yeah. then when you turn around to come back because it's only like a 10 or 15 minute ride up the mountain right so I end up shivering and putting on my coat, yep. and then when I turn around and start coming down, within ten minutes I'm Starts too hot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's so it's nice. Yeah, yeah, but like things like that. That that's what I like about Chiang Mai, and then also the get-togethers are what's amazing. I mean, this time I've been back in town for about four days, and I've left my hotel I think at six thirty or seven every morning, and I've mm -hmm. got home at ten or eleven at night because there's so many people here to hang out with yeah. and do things with. So just the networking and the the fact that since people are like running their own businesses, I mean at least our group that's like who. Who I know here, I mean, they can make time for a coffee or for breakfast yeah. or for lunch or to do a little co working. So there's never a time that it's like, man, I wish my friends were out of work so I could enjoy the day with them. There's just right. always something to do. Yeah. yeah. And it sucks if you're in a place where everybody's working, but yep. if your schedules aren't the same. Yep. Like if you're the one guy that works weekends, that pretty much means you never see your friends. Exactly. Because most people are off on the weekend. Right. That used to be my life because I had a flea market huh. and our biggest days were Saturday and Sunday. And I did not take a weekend day off, not even one of the days, for like 18 months. Wow. And I mean, you know, I mean, come on. It was a fun job. Like, I'm not saying feel sorry for me. But, you know, my friends are going hiking and stuff. And on Monday, I wanted to go hiking. But they're like, yeah. what are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Monday. <laughs> Gotta work, yeah. But around here, we do stuff like that on Mondays all the time. Yep. We have a Tuesday lunch every week. If you're listening to this and you're planning on coming to Chiang Mai, come join us. It's... I got to plug something. The Chiang Mai Digital Nomads Facebook group mm -hmm. just went past 2,000 members this awesome. week. Yeah. It's insane. Really good people. Um, a lot of them are here, kind of based here. Some of them are just people that are here part-time or they're planning on coming, whatever. Every Tuesday, we have lunch at 2 p.m. And then we come to the pool about 3 or 3.30. And I usually don't leave the pool until about 6 or yep. 6.30 because it starts getting cold when the sun goes behind the building. Mm -hmm. And I mean... We had to reprogram. A lot of us have had to reprogram our mind because I'm going, okay, this is Tuesday. Should I be getting back up you know, to my laptop and getting to work? But when I really think about it, a lot of the times I've been doing something social have been some of my most productive business mm -hmm. moments. Like that's at after the lunch, I was kind of eavesdropping, borderline rude, when Ben and Zach were talking film stuff mm -hmm. they were talking about cameras and everything and that piqued my interest because i'm getting ready to do this kickstarter and i knew the video is a big part of it and i knew nobody that did video and so i'm just sitting there kind of like pretending like i want a coffee just so i can listen to yeah. them right and then i just kind of butted in hey what, what you, you guys are filming something or is this what you guys do and then you know five minutes later i told ben because zach was hitting him up to do some filming and i said ben you might have just got two jobs today nice. let's talk soon you yep. know and I mean, that was just because we went to lunch and took an hour off in the middle of a weekday. Yep. Yeah, and that's the networking. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's one of the huge benefits of living in a place like this. The people you meet and the way everyone can kind of help each other and work together. 
And that's another benefit too. We were talking about how, you know, like any weekday you can just go and like go to a waterfall. Yeah. Or, but it's not like for people listening, it's not like we're all like lazy and we don't work. Because yeah. another benefit of the community here, which you don't get back home. For example, you were saying you used to work on the weekends. Yeah. A lot of times, like I know with my friends back home, if they have to like work in the office on a Saturday night or on Friday night, they can't come out. Everyone's like, oh man, right. like, come on. We're like, what's wrong with you? Like, you know, you're like, well, come on, loser. Like, get out. Like, right. what do you yeah, work too much? Yeah, but yeah. yeah, what you notice with this community is if on Saturday night, everyone's going out to dinner and they're like, Anton, come on, we're going out. And I'm like, no, man, I'm about to finish this project. Yeah, yeah. I've been working hard. They're like, oh, good job, man, do it. Yeah, yeah like, you need any help, let, let me know. know. Goes, exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's so supportive and it's not that like negative energy. So awesome part about the community here. Right. That yeah. is totally true. People guilt trip you if you were working oh, yeah. too much. You know, and there is something to be said. I mean, some people wound up, wind up with an unbalanced life. Yep. But people that I know here, when they're working on Saturday night, not always, but they're a lot of times it's because they they're enjoying it. Oh yeah, they want to. Yeah, and that, well, that goes back to earlier what we were yeah. saying. Like when I start a new project, sometimes I'll literally just stay in my office and I'll work for like ten hours straight because yeah. I know it's a good idea and I'm excited about actually showing it to people. So it's not because I'm like, oh, I have to work all night. It's because like I want to get this done. This is exciting. This is I'm, I'm passionate yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? While we're on that, when you get excited and you're working on something you're really into. Um, the whole comfort zone thing, right? And mm-hmm. getting outside your comfort zone and the whole, you know, people say growth happens outside your comfort zone. Um, how often, is it like routine for you to get outside your comfort zone? Like you're going to do this this conference, right? Mm-hmm. Have you done something like this? Are you going to no, no, speak no. in front of the group? Yeah, you I'm going to speak. I've never done it before. Okay. I don't really have a comfort zone. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like like I said earlier, I've, 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 I think in my life things usually just work out okay. and – and like, can I'm going to yeah, knock on wood, but like every time I've tried something, you know, maybe like, I, I think worst case scenario, what will happen this year at the retreat? I think it's going to be amazing for everyone. I think yeah. everyone's going to have a great time. I've never done it before, but I think it's going to be, you know, amazing. But worst case scenario, there'll be some flaws because it's my first time. And then next year when I do one, it'll be 10 times better. So I'm not going to not do it because I'm going to make some mistakes. Of right. course there'll be mistakes, right. but people will still have a great time. They'll learn a lot, get a lot of value. And next year I'll improve on it. That's yeah. how you do, that's how you do anything. Were you always like that or yeah. have you, okay. So you, yeah. you, like most people have this, this comfort zone and fear of failure and all that kind of stuff have you just kind of never had that? I've, ne- I've really never had wow. that because even I like I'm not afraid to fail and that's a huge problem and that's why people in my opinion second guess themselves so much and ask their friends and family for their opinions yeah. and hold off on publishing their websites or you know turn an idea into action that's why so many people never do anything with great ideas it's because they're in, maybe they'll be embarrassed or ashamed to fail I mean and I really don't care I think I've never really cared what people have to think about me yeah. and like not like I'm gonna walk around and be rude I, I don't care what people think about me because I know I'm a good person I know yeah. Like I'm genuine, so like, and no one's ever not liked me. And it's not like I don't care what people think about me. People are like, oh, Anton's such a dick, you know. Like, don't talk to that guy. But I just don't think of you know what people have to say about me. I do my own thing, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Okay, well, I thought it would be a good idea. It wasn't. Then I proved myself wrong, you know. Because whenever I do something, it's not for someone else. It's because yeah. I think it's going to be a good idea. And if it's not, it doesn't work. Then I reevaluate why it didn't, and then I kind of change my my opinion on it, and you know, try again. So. I'm not, I'm not afraid to fail. Did you have people put that in your head, do you think, at some point? Were your parents, was that what the, you were taught, your teachers? I, don't think so. I mean, my parents have always been very supportive of yeah. me, so that might have something to do with it. Yeah. But, yeah, they've always been super, super supportive, like kind of like not overbearing or over-controlling. Yeah. So that might, like, I, I've been very, I would say, independent since I was young. I, so they kind of let you do things and learn, maybe? Right, yeah. I've always cool. had great relationship with them, yeah. you know, but they, they kind of, you know, I've been independent and they've totally supported that and they've never really told me no or, you know, that's a bad idea. Or, I mean, yeah, so I think that kind of has something to do with and it. And your uncle probably I, didn't yeah, do it at all. exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, he's been telling me I'm the best since I'm five years old. So that kind of, I think, built up my uh, my yeah, ego a yeah. bit. But you know what? I, I think that the, the parent, the parental thing does have a big impact because I'm sure for you know, young kids that were growing up, if their parents are kind of telling them, like, kind of putting them down in certain ways, mm-hmm. I'm sure if your self-confidence isn't there, then it makes, it makes launching a business much harder. You don't want that rejection. You don't want people telling you, oh, you failed. And for me, if someone told me I failed when I was younger, my parents would still say, don't worry, you're still, you're, you know, like you, the next time it'll be better. Yeah, the so, game's not over. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah. I, that, that definitely, I, I know like a lot of what happens to us when we're younger impacts us when yeah. we're older. So even though they didn't directly like kind of enforced into me, they did by just always being supportive no matter right. what I was doing. Yeah, it was their actions spoke exactly. louder words. Exactly, exactly. Right? It reminds me of that scene in The Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith. I didn't see that one. I know oh, I have wow, to. I yeah. know I have to. It's Will Smith and his actual son when his son was, I don't know, like, 
like five, six, yeah. maybe even younger. I don't know. Jaden Smith. And uh, I think it was the first movie they did together. And there's this scene, they're screwing around on a basketball court. And his son, I think, like takes a shot and then I, he must have made it or whatever. And he's like jumping around like, yeah, I'm going to go pro. I'm going to go pro. And they're having this really good father-son moment. Mm-hmm. And Will Smith grabs the ball and he's like, yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, you know. <laughs> I tried to play basketball and I wasn't that good. And, you know, this kind of stuff usually runs in the family, right? Yeah. And, you know, everything was fun. And then his kid went from excited and jumping around Mm -hmm. to, like, looking at the ground and bummed out and, you know, dejected. And Will Smith looks at his son and realized what he just did to him. And he was in the middle of this, basically, this Will Smith character. It's based on a real guy. Yeah. And he was trying to sell this bone density scanner. And uh, then he tried to become a stockbroker on Wall Street. And he had had people tell him crap like that. Mm -hmm. And he realized he just did it to his son. And there was this pause and he looks at him and he's like, you know what? Don't ever let anybody tell you you can't do something. Yep. Not even me. You know? Yeah. And he just did a 180 yep. right there. I like but, that, yeah. man, you're right. Like, when kids are young, they're so impressionable. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, if you have somebody like your uncle and your parents yeah. supporting you. And unfortunately, there's a lot of bad parents out there that, you know, do put their kids down or... Yeah, they maybe push them too hard. That was maybe another thing too. I never had any pressure. Oh, yeah. So like as far as like grades in school, I definitely you know didn't do the best. I wasn't like failing anything, but like it was never a huge pressure like, oh, I have to do this for my parents. They really let me kind of choose my own path. Like, well, how hard do you want to try, you know, in this? Like how do you want to go to karate? Do you want to play football? Yeah. Like every sport I played, everything I did, it was my decision. It wasn't someone telling me you have to do this. So my life has basically since I've been old enough to think and make choices, it's been a result of my choices. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. if, you, if you're a parent out there listening, yeah. you have that habit. Give your kids freedom. They'll figure it, it you out. You can change it today. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Definitely. Your past does not equal your future. You know, mm-hmm. Be careful what you're putting in those kids' oh, yeah. heads. That yeah. stuff sinks into your, your subconscious. You might not even remember later in life. Mm-hmm. That's why it's there. And if you just support them, they can really become themselves, whoever that is. You know, they don't have to be like the perfect person in your eyes that like the way you're trying to enforce it will, you know, make them be because it'll probably be make them someone that is fearful especially when it comes to venturing out on their own and like not doing the norm not yeah. following a normal life path that they know is safe mm-hmm. let them take risks and if they fail it's not the end of the world i totally agree with that um something else i want to break down for people especially people that already know who you are um habits discipline habits routines i see a relationship between If you want to form good habits, first of all, you have to know what they are, of course. Mm -hmm. That's kind of obvious. But you have to have the discipline to form the habit. And then once the habit is formed, it becomes part of your routine. It's kind of like tying your shoes or brushing your teeth. Mm -hmm. You don't really think about it. So I'm sure you have some habits that have helped you along the way to get get things accomplished. Uh, You're an early riser. Was that something you made yourself be? I mean, my mom tells me when I was... Like a little kid, I used to just tell her, like, we'd be watching cartoons, and I'd be like, Mom, I have to go to sleep now. So I, I, I think my body, yeah, that, that's been a forever thing. My body just knows when it's ready for sleep. And I would say out of every habit I have, that's by far my bit, my, my biggest. You know, if I'm tired, like, when I, I don't take naps or anything, but, like, I go to sleep early. I yeah. do rise early. I'm like, what's that quote? Um, early to bed and early to rise leaves a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Right. I believe that, 100%. Um, we had this conversation for a little bit yesterday that my best work comes in that morning, like, in the morning time when no one else is awake yet when I'm not getting calls, emails, texts, when people don't want to hang out, when I could wake up and just focus three like three hours or so, just like dedicated work. Mm-hmm. And that kind of work is so much more important than like just, you know, a bunch of hours in the afternoon surrounded by a bunch of people. When you go out to lunch, when you have a coffee break, when someone interrupts you, that that kind of that 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 area of work is where everything happens for me. Yeah. The, I, I consider that kind of my proactive work. So in the mornings when I'm alone and I could focus, that's when I'm actually making new things happen. And then in the afternoons is when I'm getting new ideas and being responsive. So I'm being proactive yeah. in the morning and I'm being reactive in the afternoon. And you tackle the biggest, most important yes. slash scariest, whatever it is. Ta- well, you're not scared, so that doesn't even apply. Yeah. But the, the most important crucial task first, right? The one I don't want to do <laughs> first, okay, yeah, okay, cool. basically. So but, I mean, I consider it the same thing. I usually don't want to do something either because it's going to be time consuming or just because it's something that's not fun. So yeah. obviously when you're your own boss, you have to do the things that aren't fun too. So I actually, I think I heard this. I'm not big into like the, the self-help thing at all, but like I, I do, I have listened to different um, audios and I think it was Brian Tracy and he was talking about how he, make lists, he makes lists every morning and he said he does that. He writes he writes down his goals every morning, like the big goals. Yep. Then he writes down tasks and he, he, he like numbers them or letters them, I forgot, but I got the general idea from yeah, it, yeah. that he writes them down and he always does the hardest one first because once that's done, the rest of the stuff, even if it's, you know, maybe it's more difficult, but if it's not the one you're dreading, it just becomes so easy. So yep. I, I definitely do that. And you feel like you've won 
normal already. So yeah. if you wake up and you check off that first thing on your list and it's done, then the other thing is just, okay, yeah, I could do that. That's nothing. The, the hard thing is it's over. And you can't put that – if you if you stick to this and if you really do the hard one first, you're going to get it done because you're not going to go through a whole day just you know messing around. It's, it yeah. has to happen. So – Another, I think, important way to do this, which I do too, is every night before I go to bed, if I'm planning on working the next day, I write down what I want to do. So a lot of time is wasted planning, I feel like. Mm -hmm. So people that wake up and like, okay, what should I do now? I'm awake, the day started, what should I tackle first? If you have it written down, you know what you're going to do, there's no time wasted in the morning like just evaluating that all. Mm -hmm. So write it down before bed or write it down after your work day and then the next day when you wake up and you're ready to go, Boom, this is what I'm doing. There's no second guessing yourself. You just get to work. Yeah. And you know what I want to say? Because I have felt like this in the past, especially if you're somebody that listens to a lot of like Brian Tracy stuff and all these other guys, they all have like 10 different things they tell you to do. It can get a little bit overwhelming. Yep. Pick a couple at a time or one at a time and just do it for a little while and it will become a habit. And then you don't have to, it doesn't take up your mental energy and all that. Like I know a guy that's working on getting up earlier right now and I'm, I'm proud of him because he set a goal. He's not a morning person naturally, mm -hmm. but he set a goal to be in the pool every morning at 8 a.m., which I thought was really cool. I've never, I mean, it's always, I'm going to set my alarm for this time. Yeah. His thing is I'm in the pool at this time. So whatever, he could get up at six or 7.55 as long as he's in the pool. Yep. And, and he's been doing it. I think he's about five days in. I saw him today and I asked him, hey, is it getting easier yet? Because you're kind of at that day where it might be starting to yeah. about a weekend i just did this myself um because i'm not naturally a morning guy but i did 7 a.m for 30 days because they say like you know 21 or 30 days yeah. you can form, form a, habit. a habit yeah so i did 7 a.m which for me was a stretch and uh you know i usually it's almost embarrassing but i'll just i used to get up at 9 30 yeah. would be typical maybe even 10 if i stayed up too late usually because i was working or watching shark tank yeah <laughs> so i i justified it like i had yeah. a good excuse i was, I was working yeah yeah but, uh, you know, I agree with you about the morning hours. Nobody's expecting you to get back to him yet. Mm -hmm. You don't have any appointments yet. Um, anyway, he's at five days, and he said it's actually getting easier. He said the first, like, two, three, four days, mm -hmm. it got harder each day because he was a little more tired yep. each day because he wasn't yet, like, on that clock. He wasn't going to bed earlier and actually falling asleep soundly. Right. But now he's like, yeah, yeah, it's starting to get easier. And I bet, I think, well, how long is he doing? He's doing 30 days. And at the end of 30 days, even if he doesn't have that goal anymore, he's going to feel like getting up earlier. Yeah, definitely. Which is true for me. So my normal get up time is, you know, it used to be say 930. Now it's more like if I'm in bed and I wake up and it's eight, I'm like, yep, yeah, time to get up. Nice. Yeah. You know, so it's big improvement. Mm -hmm. Some days my dog wakes me up at six. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, I think habits play a huge role and just take on one, two at a time. Yeah. And one thing that like I do sometimes that that really helps me, you know, everyone's on their computers now, and like if you're working online or you're setting goals, like you usually type it up. Maybe you email yourself. Maybe you have like a note list open. I don't know. For me, like handwriting stuff down, it makes a difference. And mm -hmm. I remember people telling me that when I was like in elementary school. I yeah. think in a phys ed class, they were like, "Yeah, we're gonna write down our goals and we're gonna we're gonna handwrite them down every day because it's gonna help." But I remember not thinking that much. How old were you? Maybe like. 13 kudos to your teacher yeah yeah and i but i still remember that it's funny and i've i've went through cycles where i'm like okay everything's in the computer now i'm just gonna type it out it's not the same i don't no, know what it is but yeah there's some kind of connection like when you when you're handwriting and don't do it once and just look at it every morning if you have like three things you want to work on just write it down yeah. and it just reinforces it you know it's funny that you mentioned brian tracy and that habit because mm -hmm. i listened to a brian tracy self-discipline audio okay like a week ago on the way to the quarry to go swimming and he was talking about daily goals and he doesn't mean your goal for that day. He mm -hmm. means you write down your goals daily yep. and he said, do it by hand. And I'd always had mine in a Google doc lately and uh, I would review them daily. I would open it up and look at it, mm -hmm. but now I still do that. I open it up. There it is. But I have a whiteboard next to my chair mm -hmm. and you know, whatever piece of paper doesn't matter, but I use a whiteboard and I just write them again. Yep. You know, and there's something he says, there's something magical that happens between your mind and your pencil. There, there's something, there's something. Yeah. And even like with a, let's say like someone has a new business idea or like a new fitness goal or something. If you get it, this is what works for me. So I, I would assume it works for other people and I'd recommend it. Don't like go on the computer and like make a new Google Doc and type it all out. Get a pen and paper and write everything down, cross stuff out, add stuff to it. And that like makes it real for me somehow. Just yeah. putting it on paper and writing down like an entire business plan as I'm thinking about it. I mean, what's called free writing when you just write and don't yeah. stop. 
Yeah. yeah. So if you have an idea, like that's what I do for businesses. I basically just will write for 10 minutes and just keep writing. Right. You don't let your pen stop and you right, can get right. some great ideas out of it. I yeah. highly recommend doing that. And you that. can't be afraid to write down stupid ideas. Yeah. Yeah. No one's going to see it. It's yeah. yours. So don't worry. But yeah, yeah just keep it's going. It's sort of like the corridor effect. You write down enough dumb ideas, it gets you to a great yep. idea that yeah. you wouldn't have had. Exactly. So then you have this like huge, basically like multiple sheets of paper, just full and then take the best ideas out of that, mm-hmm. condense it down, hand write like a list of notes or bullet points and then work off that. Yeah. It's a great way to like really just brainstorm ideas if you're not good at just doing it off, you know, the top of your head. You know, I need to plug something else too, because on this topic, I just recently, you know, I've got, here's my plug for Better Me, yep. the, the game that I'm working on, the board game. Awesome a, game. So yeah, thing. I came over to play that yesterday for the first time. And I didn't, like I said earlier, I'm not really like big into the whole like uh, development space and yeah. self-help and stuff. So I didn't really know what to expect. I just wanted to like kind of meet everyone around here. But I have to say like, even for someone that's not into that, it's awesome to play with a group of people who you don't really know yet. Because instead of having like the normal conversation that you'd have with someone like, oh yeah, where are you from? What do you do? Blah, blah, blah. You get to know like more about people and right. it's not what, what I thought it would be, which is too personal. It's kind of just like getting to know someone deeper yeah. and like, there's no like, I don't know, like negative things that come out of it. It's all it really is all positive. That's so. actually banned. Yeah, yeah. In the I, I like that. You never know when people start. It's like what I'm thinking is like personal conversation. Yeah. Like maybe like negative things come up, right. but it was all just like kind of seeing the best side of people. So it's a yeah. great way to meet a new group of people mm-hmm. if that's what you're looking to do. Yeah, and you know, I misunderstood what you were saying. The part that is banned is criticizing or judging ah, other oh, people. Oh no, I didn't, yeah. <laughs> if, if you want to talk about something that you know was negative, right. an experience for you or whatever, right. you can. It doesn't really happen. It, it didn't happen yesterday. Yeah, at all. yeah. But um, there's two real keys to the game because uh, to make sure that people they need to be in a comfortable state to really learn and absorb and like, mm-hmm. write down these goals and take action. And uh, you can't have people judging and criticizing. If anybody in the game is doing that, it can squash the whole vibe. Oh, totally. Yeah. You know. Um, and the other thing is, you're and if you draw a card that you don't want to act on or you don't want to share about it or whatever, mm-hmm. you can pass. And nobody's going to look down on you for passing. And you know what? It rarely happens, but it's there. So you don't have to worry. If you yep. get a card you don't like, yeah, I'll pass. Or yeah. you can you can wait and do it on your next turn if you need to think about it. Right. So you're not on the spot. Nobody's going to be like, come on, do it, do it, do it. So no, not at not all. Like not that. at all. It's just really like I think it's a great way to, to get to know people. So yeah. like for like, I don't know, maybe we play with coworkers or a new group mm-hmm. of friends. It's just like you learn stuff about people that, that is positive that you wouldn't know by having you know the average conversation. Right. So it's really cool. And yeah. you know, the guys that you met yesterday... Yep. Um, Almost every one of them, I either met them for the first time at a game mm-hmm. or I had met them briefly before and that's how I really got to be friends with them. Yep. I mean, Russell and John and I just met Aaron yesterday. You also met him yesterday? Yep. I think. I mean, yeah. He's in your class. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, ben, I met him briefly mm-hmm. at a Coffee Monster thing, but then I really got to know him in the game. And it really builds bonds because you talk about something other than the weather. Yeah, or, exactly, you know, exactly. Yeah. yeah, just a natural conversation yeah. starters instead. Like it gets much more... I don't know, like deep and like you see the good side of people, I would yeah. say. So instead of like when you first meet someone, maybe you don't know what to really think from them, think about them, but this like makes you see the positive side of people and it gives yeah. you, I, I don't know, for me, it made me like really respect everyone here. Cool. So I think that's a great thing that came out of it. Yeah. So I was really happy to play and get to know the guys that were here yesterday. Awesome. Yeah. yeah and they were happy that you came mm-hmm. and I'm glad you got a chance and mm-hmm. thank you. Um, you know, better me can better me players accountability and connection i think or connection and accountability i formed a group on yep. facebook and that's what it's called and even if you haven't played the game which the kickstarter is launching probably by the time you're listening to this but uh get in there and you can set these goals like we're talking about if you want to say you know in the pool at 8 a.m that's where this guy bart did that mm-hmm. you can get in that group and set your own goal whether it's you know to write down your goals every day or whatever um better me players accountability and connection or better me players connection and accountability and it's an open group so jump in there and uh we all keep each other accountable there mm-hmm. so uh yeah that's my plug i'll stop talking about it but i'm really excited about <laughs> yeah, it, it. i'm be, so excited be. about that yeah. kickstarter man yeah i can't wait to track it yeah um distractions i just really quickly want to touch on that um you work at home right usually for the most part i do like to get out of the house every once in a while but you do it early yeah, I, or early I do. Yeah. Okay, so well, when it's like dead, yeah, you, exactly. you go to camp, the yeah. co-working spot, you're, right? That's you're the only one. Yeah, there. so that's what I've been doing here in Chiang Mai. Like, there's this place that fills up in the afternoons. In the morning, there's no one there. It's this big, open, just like beautiful space with the view of the mountains. Yeah. So I've been going there early in the morning, and it's great. I'm super productive. I've been getting basically all my work done. Um, before 9.30 because I've been meeting people for late breakfasts and coffees and lunches and dinners. So, yeah, yeah. It seems like you're a social guy. Yep. But when you're working, you're working. Oh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, like... 
another, I, I think one of the reasons that I see success in a lot of different businesses is because I could do what I would call heads down work, which yeah. I'm just like, like black out everything. You know, you're not checking your cell phone. You don't have Facebook open in another tab. You're not mm-hmm. checking the news, you know, you're just working. So again, maybe because when I, when I do that work, it's because I'm doing stuff that I'm passionate about. And it's like I said earlier, the morning work is the proactive work. So if I'm doing stuff like, you know, responding to emails, yeah. then maybe I'm have Facebook open or maybe I'm reading a news story or checking a score for a game. Like that's when I kind of give myself some freedom but in the morning if I'm passionate about something I don't want to be checking something else so yeah that's when I do my my heads down work when no one can distract me there's no one around yeah. and when I'm actually motivated to do so cool I've talked to a lot of people recently that have been struggling with that yeah and they're going to places where they have a lot of friends and people doing similar things and they want to talk about it and ask questions and and just they're happy to see them because they're buddies yeah. and all that. And uh, I know it can be a problem. Yeah. The, the amount of work that you can get done in three hours of like motivated heads down work is what some people can get accomplished in 40 at an office where all their buddies are yes. around asking them questions and talking. It's insane. Yeah. Right. You know, I used to work in a real estate office and we had glass doors and a lot of people just kept their doors open even when they're on the phone with clients. I always thought that was weird. Yep. <laughs> Especially real estates. You don't want everybody to know everything right. you're talking about. But... Um, I used to be one of the weird ones and there were certain times a day where I copied a lady down the hall for me. I would close my door and I would hang, I would tape a sign in the window that said, do not disturb lead generation in progress, mm-hmm. which lead generation, if you've never been in sales, just means you're calling people, you're emailing, you're doing whatever, you're, you're looking for deals, you're looking for clients. And uh, it was funny because I would have this piece of paper at eye level on my door and people would still tap on the door with their knuckle. <laughs> yep. <laughs> More quietly than they would normally knock on the door. They probably normally would just open the door. But they saw this sign. So instead of actually not disturbing me, they'd just do it in a different way. Mm -hmm. They'd kind of tap on the window and I'd look at them. I'd literally have the phone on my ear. I'd look at them like, why are you tapping on my glass? (laughs) I tried not to be a jerk about it. but And then they'd like, they'd look at me like with their eyebrows up like, okay, you want to open the door? And I'd just point at the sign, you know, like, come on, man. (laughs) You know, like talk to me in an hour. I'm only doing this for an hour or two. I think it's Brian Tracy actually who talks about that too in one of the the audios about how like when people go to work they should work. Yeah, is it Brian? I don't know. Have you heard that one? Like, yes, and, back to work. Back, back to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sounds like he's trying to hypnotize you. He does. Yeah. He, does. he does. Like very and, soothing. And just remember, when you get in a situation where somebody's trying to distract yeah. you. Say, back to work and let them ruin somebody else's career. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. I love that. Let it's them true. ruin somebody else's it, and career. It, it's true. So if you're in a corporate job now and you're trying yeah. to get ahead, the people that get ahead aren't the ones that are constantly talking to their friends and getting distracted. Yeah. They're the ones that are working. And if you're your own boss, I'm definitely not like um, an advocate for working you know, 50 hours a week and like overworking yourself and getting stressed out. But if you're passionate about something, don't let anyone take you away from what you're passionate yeah. about. If in the mornings in those three hours of time that I get so much done, I was like in a group of my friends. I'd be letting people take that away from me. So instead, yeah. keep it to yourself and do, like be proud of it. Don't like feel embarrassed if you're telling your buddies like, "No, I'm not going to co-work today because I have stuff to get done." Just get it done. It's it's yours. It's your business. It's up to you to say that. Yeah, and they should respect that. And if they don't, that's yeah, and that's they will. Their... And they, they if you're in the right kind of yeah. if you're in a, a corporate office, they probably won't. Yeah. If you're in a group like we have, they will. Yeah. Right. And if they don't, that's on them. That's, exactly. That's yes. Not your then, yeah. Exactly. Don't worry about their opinions yeah. when they're saying, "Oh, he's rude." No. Jack Canfield calls it a high quality no. Mm-hmm. You know, you you need to learn to say. I know, but you can do it in a somewhat friendly and yep. tactful way. Yep. You know, like, hey man, I'd love to hang out and talk, but right now is not the time. Mm-hmm. You know, catch me on the weekend, catch me after five o'clock, whatever it is. Yeah. I think a big thing that helps with that is another I keep going back to the four hour work week because that book yeah. put a lot of like the thoughts of how I run businesses now in my mind. But in the beginning of that book, the, uh, Tim Ferriss, the author, talks about dreamlining. And basically yeah. what that is is like writing down all of your goals, but like it could be anything. It could be like where you want to live. Do you want to rent a condo? Do you want a house? Do you want a sports car? Do you want a motorcycle? Like, do you want to go on vacations? How much do you want to spend on food? Literally, like your whole your ideal life. What is it? Then you write down all of the all the expenses. So you're literally like looking up cars online. What's what's a lease payment? What's a car payment? How much does this condo cost in you know like Venice Beach if that's where I want to live? Whatever it is, and then you know how much money you want to spend and like or what you need, and then then you start like actually planning your business to reach those goals. And what I think helps with that is then when you're doing this, like this work and people are distracting you, like you, you know why you're doing it. So you don't lose track. You you just look at, you look at your list. I'm doing this because this is what I want. This is what's going to get me there. So I think that helps like in a big way. Yeah. It's different than this guy just wants to chat. And this guy is trying to take my vacation. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. Um, 
tips. I'm wondering. Um, you mentioned the four hour work week. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. What have, do I don't have know some... if it's I haven't read it seriously in like five six years. Yeah. So I don't know how relevant relevant it is now. I'd say with the mindset stuff, sure. it definitely is. Um, but well, like that author has a podcast. Yeah, he does. That's yeah. current, and he's got a blog that's and current that he Tim constantly Ferris. updates. Yeah, so the, it's I think go to the four hour workweek dot com, and you'll see like a link for his blog, and that's always yeah. updated. Um, that book, what what helped me with e commerce was the recommendation of building a Yahoo store, which mm-hmm. is an e commerce platform, which costs twenty nine dollars a month that let me build build a really nice website. The reason I say it's outdated now is because I would never use them anymore. Yeah. So, um, you know, for technical stuff, maybe not so much, right. but for like mindset, I think it's great. Like a lot of my buddies out here, I'd say 95% of them, like they've read that book and they kind of got them started and opened yeah. their minds. So for that, definitely. Yeah. I'd recommend I, I agree too. Yeah. I mean, it helped me start thinking that way. Right. That yeah. Way, big time. Yeah. Um, oh, I know what I want to ask you. Um, do you partake in mastermind groups or have you? No. Okay. No, yeah, and it's not because like I have anything against it, yeah. but I on, until I start. I remember I was talking about posting on a forum about e-commerce about in 2012, and I started my first e-commerce business in 2007. For about five years, I had no idea that there were these online communities. Yeah. So I didn't even know it was an option. I didn't know about local meetups for e-commerce people. I didn't know about these online websites where people talk about it. So I, I think it was actually a benefit to me because instead of having all this noise from different people, yeah. I had to teach myself and basically test and keep what worked and cut what didn't. Um, but I've never joined the mastermind really because I've taught myself and I kind of like that. I feel like if too many people are telling you their opinion, then nothing ever happens because mm-hmm. what works for me exactly, you know, like might not work exactly for someone else. There's always tweaks. So even in my course, people sign up and they think they're going to get like this step-by-step blueprint, which it is based on like the way I do things in sequential order. But I also leave a lot of room for interpretation and I let people kind of learn on their own because you can't take one of my websites and copy it yeah. and then have the same numbers. It's not going to work like that. You could follow the formula, but then there's always things that you kind of have to do on your own. So I don't want to hear someone's exact story and copy their exact advertising campaign, let's say. Mm-hmm. I want to get the broad picture, even like going back to mentoring. I want like, I want to see their life and get a few key phrases and then I want to act on that. It's the fundamentals, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, good. And any other podcasts in particular or tools, that, apps, whatever, what helps you day to day? With podcasts, I do listen to them very sporadically. Not yeah. really business ones. Okay. I like the Joe Rogan podcast. Me too. Yeah, I love the guy. I mean, it, it, I, there's a lot of them and they're long, so I probably listen to like, I don't know, one a week if I'm at the gym yeah. or on a motorbike or something. Yeah, it's cool. It's entertaining. So you could pick and choose which guests you want to hear. Yeah. But yeah, I like that one. Um, what else do I listen to? Any apps? You I like the Empire Flippers guys. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, not all the time, but when they have relevant guests on, I do listen to them. They're, right. they're good guys. And um, apps, you mean like on my phone or for my stories? Or for... Either really. But yeah, I was thinking yeah. stuff on your phone that just... No, nothing nothing on my phone. Nothing. I keep apps minimal. Right. Um, and then like I use a lot of apps in my, in my businesses to try to help automate things. Uh, what's great now about running an e-commerce business or a blog or anything is that there are these apps that you could pay small monthly fees for that will do work for you basically. So mm-hmm. let's say for an e-commerce store, for example, someone buys something for you, then you want that order to be shipped to the supplier. So the supplier will then ship it to your customer. So now I use an app called Ecom Hub that does that for me. So I use apps for my e-commerce stores, but nothing really like for day-to-day life stuff. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, I know that, yeah, all kinds of shipping tracking apps and all kinds yeah, of Yeah, there's tons of stuff, tons yeah. of stuff. Yeah, the one that I've been liking lately, uh, Lumosity. Mm-hmm. And actually, they're one of the, the guys. brain games? Joe Rogan mentions it all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah, it's brain games. And uh, they're sort of like IQ tests in a way, but they move and stuff. They're, okay. not, they're not static, you know. But th- that's a lot of fun. Lumosity, you might want to check. I mean, not you. Yeah, whoever's yeah. listening no, might want to check that out. Um, and I'm trying to think books-wise. Brian Tracy is a good one. I just... You know, from time to time, I go back to his stuff. Yeah. Jack Canfield's a favorite of mine, too. Mm. Um, if you haven't checked out the success habits, is that what I, I always mix up the names? The success principles, I think. Jack Canfield. Um, that's one of the best books I've ever read. If you are into the self help stuff and yeah. you want to check that out, it's really like a manual, step by step. It's not a bunch of fluff. Yeah. It's uh, like he gets into specific details on, you know, how to form a mastermind group, daily habits and rituals. Nice. It's, it's good stuff. Yeah, a book that's actually old that I just read, and I wish I would have read it um, earlier on, is called Influence, and it's really popular like yeah. in the business world, and it, it's, it's awesome. Like, What I like about it is it basically talks about like the mindset of how someone kind of trust something or believe something or, you know, basically people's influence on other people. And it's so like, it's so interesting to me mainly because every 
point, like everything they, they say is backed by an actual case study. Cool. And all these case studies are referenced in the book so you can look them up and, you know, it's not just some author who thinks he knows about influence who wrote a book. It's all yeah. based on actual research. And nice. I don't know, it's just really interesting to me. So I, I, I'm enjoying that book. And when there's a story associated yeah. with some kind of, you know, principle, you remember it so much better yep. too. That's really smart of an author to do. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of apps... You've got something you're working on. Uh, how much you want to tell us about that? It's a cool project. I'm excited. I want to try it. Yeah, just uh, so basically, like you know, I, I'm involved in a few different businesses, but this one is called Testimonial Guard, and there's a website up now which is just a way to kind of like notify people of updates. So it's called TestimonialGuard.com, and it's for people that own online businesses. So what you'll realize now, if you go to any of my websites or basically any website, and you see testimonials, basically from previous customers. They're really just text with an image and someone's name under it. And the problem is that you don't know if that's a real person. You know, I could, yeah. in theory, just take a bunch of people's photos, right. write fake in testimonials. Theory. Right. Yeah, <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. I would never do such a thing. <laughs> and then leave these on my website. So there's no real proof, right? So what, what we're doing at my company is building this, this system where actual purchasers from these different businesses can leave testimonials. And the way you'll know that they're real people is that these testimonials on the vendor's website actually have to be signed. And we call it signing by your, dig, uh, by your digital profile. So you could sign it with your Facebook profile. You could sign it with a Twitter handle mm-hmm. or you could sign it with a LinkedIn account. So you'll know these are real people. You could see their real profiles. And it's not just some random images from you know, a, a stock photo website with a fake testimonial. They're real customers, so it really proves you know the validity of the site you might buy from. So our product is really uh, it's geared towards towards business owners already. So yeah. whether you sell you know an info product or even if you have like an e-commerce store or even a podcast and you want people to know that your audience is real, it's a great way to just to to show that. And what's really cool about it is. Then stage two of it, we're just getting basically the minimum viable product out now. But the next step is to when you go to these websites and you see the testimonials, they'll be ranked by your basically circle of influence. So if your friends have left a review, they're on top. Yep. Yep. And if a friend of a friend has purchased from there, you'll see them and it'll say, you know, maybe a friend of Dan has left this review. So really cool way of doing things. So yeah, it's it's like systematizing word of mouth Mm -hmm. and referrals. Exactly. You know, even if your friends on the other side of the country or yeah. the world, you're going to see that testimonial. I, I'm really excited for that because actually yesterday, uh, Chris, who you met, yep. he said that he had looked at the website for Better Me and he, he noticed the testimonials. And it's I think that's how we got talking yep. about this because it just so happened that he knew several of the people who wrote the testimonials. And so for him, those were very powerful and they made him way more interested in the game. And that's part of the reason he agreed to come play yesterday. Right. So, I mean, it flat out works. Yep, exactly. And so that was kind of a fluke just because he knew some of the people, but you're finding a way to make that happen more often. Yeah, exactly. And so I'm completely sold on the concept. I think that uh, another example is the comment streams on blogs have been doing something real similar to that. Mm-hmm. You know, to try to show you this is real people and, and they're commenting and they're using their Facebook profile. Yep. I've done it myself on other people's blogs. So I'm totally sold on that idea. Yeah. So if anyone's interested, it's testimonialguard.com and there's a way you could just enter your email address to get notified once we're actually live and, you know, you can install it on your site. Cool. And I want to do that on the Better Me site. Awesome. For yeah, sure. Yeah. No doubt. I can't wait to put it on all my sites. On yeah. Them. yeah. Yeah. Do you have a price point yet? Nope. No, it's okay. going to be, it's going to be low, but yeah, we don't have one yet. Yeah. yeah. Subscription or one time or? Subscription. Cool. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah, nice. That shows confidence in a product too. Oh yeah. You know, if somebody's trying to get a bunch up front, you know, well, why are they doing that? Right. You know, but if they're asking for a, like Shopify and all these others, you know, just give us twenty five bucks a month. Right. If you don't like it, you spent twenty five bucks, and a lot of them have a guarantee anyway. So exactly. They're showing you their confidence. They're not locking you into some long term contract. Right. They're not asking for hundreds or thousands up front. Right. And the purpose of these subscriptions is because stuff like this, you know, technology always changes and there's constantly like maybe Facebook's going to change, maybe Twitter's going to change, maybe LinkedIn will, maybe a new social profile will come out. So the reason like in a business like this, it works on the subscription model is so it could always be super current and super relevant. And if you have it on your site for two years and two years, maybe it'll look totally different than it does now, but it'll be the best it can be. So that's why we do these kind of recurring payments. Yeah. And it keeps you accountable too. Definitely. You have to keep ahead of that curve to keep your customers. And also, I mean, I'm going to be using it on my site, so I want it to be the best possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I want my conversions to go up too. Good point. And it's funny how that works. You wanted it on your site. You're making it. Everybody else is going to get involved. You got into drop shipping. People start asking you questions. So you made a course. That, that's that's how life works. I mean, yep. if you look for opportunities, that's how life works. There's always something. Yep, I yeah, I agree. Um, good. Hey, we're kind of at that point, man. Uh, do you have anything you want to add? Anything we didn't cover? Feel free to say yes. I mean, I mean, 
No, I just I want to say again that your game better than me. I thought that was really cool oh, yesterday. Oh, can what? we can we draw a card? Let's draw a card. How about I randomly cut the deck and I'll flash it to you, and if you don't like it, just say no, and I'll, right. I'll cut it again. We'll go in the people category. You like that one? Mm, yeah, sure. Oh, there was a, mm. no, no. <laughs> next. It, it, I won't be offended. Uh, uh, let's do it. If you could spend twenty minutes with a hero, still living or not, who would it be? Why are they your hero, and what would you would talk about? So, um, you know, I don't know. A hero is kind of like a, a big word, but I'm going to talk about people that aren't my family because I could spend time with them if I wanted to. So, someone that I'd have a chance to spend time with, um, maybe that you know, normally wouldn't. I'd really want to spend time with Steve Jobs. It says still living or not, so that's a possible yeah, that's right. a possible one. Uh, the reason why is because we talked about earlier how a lot of people we know that own businesses aren't the smartest people. They're just action takers. And Steve Jobs, I think, is at a level that is so more advanced than like anyone else. Just the way he thought about not just business, but how to like treat customers and how to create things. It's like a whole different way of thinking about things. It's so much more advanced than anyone I've even been within miles of has thought about things. And I feel like he was one of the biggest innovators that we've had in, I mean, my lifetime. And I would love to just, just talk with him and just see how he responded to different topics. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, here, you want to draw a card for me? Yeah, sure. Normally in the game, I'd probably also pitch in on that. Yeah. Let's see what we get what, here. What's white? Mind. Let's see mind. I like mind. What? Oh, this kind of doesn't work. Okay. Um, it's a weird one that doesn't really work when we're not in the same room or whatever. Okay, this one, it says, For the remainder of the game, eliminate the words problem and difficulty from your vocabulary. Replace them with empowering words like challenge, obstacle, opportunity, puzzle, etc. Say problem or difficulty during this game, and the player who says thank you first gets to... gets. Let me start again. The player who says thank you first before the next roll gets to choose a card or point of yours, assuming you have one. So in other words, they can steal a point from you. Right. So it's it's telling you not to use those kind of words with negative connotations like problem and difficulty, which would have been cool if we drew that in the beginning, beginning of the <laughs> podcast. Yeah, but I'll try not to say it for the last couple okay. of minutes here. Um, so that's just a little kind of sample of the, the questions that come up in the game. They get you talking about stuff you normally wouldn't talk about, uh, get you to... Whether it's people you already know or strangers, you get to know them much more quickly than you would otherwise. Uh, and it makes you accountable. You know, you have commitments. I have a list of commitments from the game yesterday mm -hmm. that I'm working on, like putting a quote up on the wall. That's something I still have to do. Um, what did you commit to yesterday? I have to go get my teeth cleaned. I've had to oh, do nice. it. I've been putting it off. But in Thailand, they have really good dental clinics. So, yeah, yeah myself and one of the other one of the other guys from the game, That's Chris, right. we're accountable for each other. And, and we're you gonna have go. a deadline too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to go uh, this weekend and get our teeth cleaned. Cool. <laughs> yeah, nice. but before Tuesday, I think, is the deadline. So we're going to go and get it done. Yeah. You know, that was I committed to that a few months ago too nice. because yeah. of the game. It's yeah. a good one, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so one more time, you guys, uh, before we let Anton go, it's dropshiplifestyle.com. Yep. Yeah, okay, dropshiplifestyle.com. If you're interested in the course that Anton's created, go check that out. Uh, like I say, I know several people personally who are successful with that. I'd recommend it 100%. No hesitation at all on Thank that. you, thank you. Uh, and then stay tuned, and you can sign up for that email update for this new product. Yes. What's the name of it again? TestimonialGuard.com. Yeah, so go check that out. I'm planning on using that. And uh, thank you so much for agreeing to be on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having Especially me. Especially on fun. short notice. Yeah, no, of course. Really good. So, hey, everybody, thanks for listening. All these episodes are at odonlife.com. You can check out the game we've been talking about at bettermegame.com. And we hope to see you next time. This has been Episode 5 with Anton Crayley. Cue the awesome DJ music stuff. <laughs> see you guys. Thanks Take a lot. Care.